Good day, fellow mayors. I hope you are having a pleasant city building day. This is Captain Obvious, and in this episode, we are going to redo this border interchange with the same exact design but more improved. And the reason why I need to redo this interchange is to change the angle of this bridge and add a train track in between so the reason why i want to change the angle of this bridge is so this will continue to go straight and i i don't curve highways especially over water because i like the suspension on the bridges so as this goes straight that actually reduces the amount of space that we have here to build especially when i want to add airports that's plural uh spoiler alert yeah, so therefore I need to change this angle to be going towards more of this direction. So we have more space. And another thing is I also dislike this thing. Uh, so this is an elevated decline. And I think this would still work as a grounded decline. Uh, I really don't like bridges that looks like this. So if you notice this, that looks like that. Here we have limited like elevated bridges everything is mostly grounded and i think it makes it look a lot better for your interchanges to be that way so this one this is the only actual bridge everything else is grounded so all of this are declined uh slopes and that's the reason why i want to redo that interchange before anything it is always a good idea to flatten the terrain especially when you want to have smooth roads we will be using the six lane highway and in between will be a train track followed by the other direction of the highway. Consequently, on the other side of the river, I want the same exact height from our starting point so our bridge will be level and not sloped. As we build the bridges, you can notice a difference of the suspension pillars where they are not parallel from the other road. That is absolutely unacceptable, so we will just need to make sure that everything between the two points are completely clear, then simply rebuild both bridges. Now to go across and over the highway. We want to make the bridges as low as possible, so I am starting off with the train track as our bridge height guide. Then I will be using the one lane off ramp parallel to the bridge. Then we will simply connect them together. To make the bridge slope as smooth as possible, I am using the trench bridge technique where I first dig a deep trench, then build a bridge over the trench, which will make the bridge smooth. If the bridge upgrades to the tallest version, then just update it until you get it to the desired bridge. Before building the off-ramp to go north, do not forget to use the slope terrain tool so it will be a smooth gradual slope. And I will also connect this on-ramp from the crossing the avenue bridge to the two-lane highway. It is important that our curved roads are smooth convincing curves and not an odd shaped curve. Now for the other side of the highway, it is no longer necessary to continue the roads as bridges. So instead, I will add soil until it is the same height as the roads. We will also need to pay attention to the space under the bridge because we will have an on-ramp going under our new bridges. But first, while we are at this camera angle, I will connect the south highway to the right and remedy the directions of the one-way roads. Just look at how smooth those bridges are, and they are also as low as possible. I just really dislike unnecessary high bridges. It just looks unpleasant to look at. So we have our terrain raised, and I am ready to make the grounded loop. However, I just realized that the terrain is too close to the main highway, which doesn't give us ample space for the under the bridge on-ramp. It is probably a better idea to first start with the on-ramp then worry about the terrain later. You will witness me attempt to build the road under the bridges several times until I just decided to remove the bridges completely. It is best that I first build the road and then we could rebuild the bridge then after. Now we are back to constructing the grounded loop and we want to make the roads as parallel to each other 
while making the train track go over one of the roads. Do not forget to make sure that the train track bridge is as low as possible going over the road and we also need to reconstruct the rest of the train track so it will be a gradual decline. This grounded decline loop needs to be perfect but as I construct the other decline loop, you will notice a wrinkle between the roads which is unacceptable. I try to redo the loops but with little success. It just does not look right. The right solution is to completely redo the terrain slope at an equal decline with a larger brush. Then we can try to rebuild the two decline loops. And the wrinkle between the roads is gone. I will provide an extra exit ramp going south so this is no longer a standard trumpet but with a minor additional ramps on many sides. Okay now this train track needs to go somewhere and this looks like a great location to place a new cargo station which will be exclusive for the farm industry. These small warehouses were just space fillers but now we can actually fill the space with something we need like the cargo station. And how convenient that the small warehouse can squeeze in and not overlap on the track. And of course we need some distance so I am going to pull the cargo station back so we can gradually incline the train track and connect with the other line. The interchange is definitely much more interesting after I have added the train track between the highways. In all aspects of any build, I try to add something a little extra to make your build just uh, that little more interesting. Instead of just two highway bridges, add a train track between or beside the highways. Instead of just an interchange, try to have a track go under, over, or both through the interchange. Just that tiny adjustment will make a world of difference in your design build. So these two additional ramps are alternate methods to get to the highway to head north or south from the city. While this ramp will be an access point from the south to enter the city. It is vital to provide multiple entry and exit points to the highway in order to reduce bottlenecking. Now I can continue our coastline and populate the empty spaces with roads and zoned buildings. Notice how I avoid filling anything next to the border of our build jurisdiction. When you enter cinematics mode, I don't want to make it too obvious that this is the end of our build tile. And finally, we have finished this side of the coastline. For the remaining minute, I continued with minor detailing with trees and rocks to cover the soil in the steep slopes. Then after, we will do a final review of what we have accomplished and what else needs to be added. When I look at the seawall, there is just too much seawall and not enough harbor breaks. Furthermore, there is no movement in the water. One of the main reasons why I wanted to play on this map was to fill the rivers with ferries and fishing ships. All types of movement in your city makes it much more appealing to watch. Therefore, I will add two shellfish fishing harbors. Ideally, tuna harbors are better for two reasons. First is, it brings in more fish yield, and second, the tuna fishing ships are the largest of the fishing ships, so when you zoom out to view your city from top view, the tuna fishing ships are much more prominent than the other fishing ship types. Our current population is at 72,000, and we have a long way to go to reach the at least 100,000 population. So when I can, I will zone more high-density residential. Since the city has ample elementary school coverage, I have deleted the two generic European elementary schools and replaced them with the community school. From the south highway, we need an off-ramp to enter the city. 
and I completely missed to upgrade the forked road as a two-way but do not worry I eventually saw my error and fixed it. And the last but certainly not the least, we need a way for the industry side to enter the interchange in order to go to the East Highway. And there we have it, we have improved the design of the interchange and added a cargo station for both the farming industry and hopefully the fishing trucks on this side of the continent. Because as I mentioned in the previous episode, there are four cargo ship destinations. So if we look at here, there are four destinations. Uh, how can you tell that it's actually four different destinations? Well, if you click on a ship, it will tell you. So this is Springdale that goes there. This going up is going to Canmont. And this is going to West Valley. And that side is going to San Vegas. So that is definitely four different locations and having this cargo station here is actually an extension of this cargo line so i will place in a cargo hub over here we're going to connect the train line here so instead of some of the trucks having to go here because they want to export to get to this station right because it's connected by a train line so instead of the trucks driving all the way to the end they would just deliver to either one of these cargo stations which is what is causing all this traffic because they really want to travel there or actually export there so instead of that happening having a cargo station here and here which is uh, an extension of this one will hopefully reduce the amount of uh, cargo traffic in in these destinations um actually i just yeah and that's pretty much it that is my justification of this and of course we also changed the angle of this road so instead of going upward which reduces the space that we have here i made it go here and we can easily make an interchange that will go towards on the top because this side we can't really fill with anything we can't stone or add more buildings so this will most likely be just the train line and there and of course you i also don't want to build a lot of stuff here because we are at the border and as i mentioned i always try to remove uh the notion of where the border is you could tell it's somewhere here but not exactly because it is extended ever so slightly and in any case that concludes today's episode so if this video helps you with your city, I would truly, truly appreciate it if you took the time to subscribe and feel free to like the video and comment down below. Until then, this is Captain Obvious, making the world of cities a smoother place. Have a pleasant rest of your day and I hope to see you again in the next episode.